meditation on Ar Rahman and all of these matters, I could it could not be compared to anything. And this is how his letters were constantly from a prison, from a hole in uh, hidden in the side of a hole in darkness. But this is how he was. Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah No doubt his character and his achievements are great. Imam Ahmad Rahimullah says that the difference between us and them, and the us being Ahlul Sunnah and them being Ahlul Bidah, is Yom al is the day of the funerals. We'll see you the day of the funerals. This will be the difference. Because the funerals of Ahlul Sunnah, those of Ahlul Hadith, those who Allah Ta'ala has written for them, Qubul or acceptance throughout the earth, everybody comes. Some riding animals, some walking on their feet. All miles and miles around they come for this purpose. And so, this is why he said, the day of Jannah is. The day of Jannah is. Because Ahl al are usually isolated by themselves. Alone. Alayk as No one's concerned about them. They live despicable and they die despicable. They lived away from the Sharia and they die away from the Sharia. So Ibn Taymiyyah has said that the people of Damascus who held him in great honor gave him a splendid funeral and estimated 200,000 men. 200,000 men and 15,000 women attended his funeral. He was buried, like we said, at that particular cemetery in Damascus where his mother was buried. His name is Sufiya. 200,000 men. And this is why Imam Ahmad said, between us and you is Janazah. They won't know who's upon the haq and who's upon the batal. They won't know who's correct and who's not. Yom Janazah is. And it's Imam Ahmad's funeral was bigger than that. Millions. And hundreds of thousands became Muslims. Converted to Islam on that day. Why, it was a glorious day. People came into Islam. People left Bidah and came into Sunnah. On this, on the day of Imam Ahmad's funeral. Character and achievement of Imam occupied a highly honorable place among his contemporary religious scholars. Due to his prodigious memory, he had a great memory. Brilliant intelligence. Encyclopedia knowledge, we, we took that. Dauntless courage. He's described as a great orator, brave and fearless, resolute and disciplined. Very pious, resigned and content. Contented. I think he means contented. Noble and forgiving, just and ever determined. Just and ever determined. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah reformed. Had it, he had reform, reformative endeavors and literary pursuits that covered a vast field, which can be summarized as follows. One, revival of the faith. This is what he wanted to do. He wanted to revive Islam. He wanted to revive Iman. He wanted to revive the deen. An inherence, a strict adherence to Tawheed. A strict and clear cut. No compromising. No gray area. Black and white. Adherence, adherence to Tawheed. Eradication of all false beliefs and customs. Criticism of the philosophers and all of those who were trying to say something was superior to the Quran and the Sunnah. Removing the un-Islamic beliefs. By going against the Christians and going against the Jews in his books and his works and verbally, and going against the Shia, and going against the Bataniya, and going against all aspects of Ahl al Rejuvenation of Islamic thought and related sciences, giving rebirth to Tafsir, rebirth to Asul Tafsir, rebirth to Asul Fiqh, rebirth to Fiqh, rebirth to Asul Hadith, rebirth to Hadith, rebirth to the Ilm al Nasa wal Mansur, rebirth to all of those issues. Rejuvenation of the Islamic sciences, so they became alive again after the once being considered something that was dead or rusted over or no one gave concern to. Ibn Taymiyyah Allah brought back to life. Brought back to life. Total workings of Ibn Taymiyyah Allah that are known, because as many that aren't, is 621. Many of them been lost. Al Jawab al Sahih, Liman Badullah Dina Masih. An answer to the criticism against the Christians. It's actually al jawab al sahih the correct response. Liman badala deen al-Masih. For the one who corrupted the deen of the Messiah. 
They corrupted the deen of Isa alayhi salam. They're not on the deen of Isa alayhi salam. They don't know the deen of Isa alayhi salam. They can't find the deen of Isa alayhi salam except in Islam. He wrote against them. Rad ala mantaqiyin, those who are upon mantaq, in logic, we have many of those today, and like this. This is basically Ibn Qaymiyyah rahimahullah, and we have not given him his just due in this matter, but this dars is aqeedah wa thatiyah, not the life of Ibn Taymiyyah, not a series of that. But just enough to know about him, so that you have the respect that you are, that you are to have regarding such a man, such a unique, righteous, strong, courageous individual. We need the likes of him in our time. We need the likes of Ibn Taymiyyah in our time. Now, the explainer of this book, before we get go directly to it, Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Salih al Uthaymeen. And he is Abu Abdullah, Muhammad Ibn Salih, Ibn Muhammad Ibn Uthaymeen at Tamimi. And at Tamimi is a tribe, well known tribe. Amongst some of those who went the way of the Khawarij, and amongst some of those who are the most righteous of people and scholars. To such degree that the Prophet said, Banu Tamim, the tribe of Tamim, they are the hardest people among, uh, uh, towards the Dajjal. They are the hardest people upon the Dajjal. So this is, he is a Tamimi, a Najdi. He was born in the city of Uneza, Qasim, the Qasim region, on the 27th of Ramadan. He was born in the month of Ramadan. 1926. Christian era, 1347 Hijri, in a famous religious family. Didn't we say this before? That things don't just come out the blue. Ibn Taymiyyah was born in a deen-oriented, scholarly family, and the likes of Ibn Taymiyyah come out of that. Ibn Uthaymeen was born in a religious, deen-oriented family, and the likes of Ibn Uthaymeen comes out of that. It is a rare thing indeed that Someone who has no surrounding that is Islamic and no family that is Islamic, that they will come out to that level of Ibn Taymiyyah. They may come out in a good level. No one's saying they won't. Allah Ta'ala blesses who He wills. But we're saying to that level, when you look at to that level, to that degree, those people usually came out of generations. Generations of Islamic scholarship <laughs> pops up Ibn Taymiyyah. Generations of taqwa, here comes Ibn Taymiyyah. Generations of fiqh, generations of hadith, here comes Muhammad al-Wahhab, rahimahullah. Here comes Shafi'ah. Come out of that situation. So if there's anything a brother wants to do, is to make sure his family's straight now. And his family's straight, and the generations are straight now, and the children are straight now, and everybody, everybody's up on ta'id and sunnah now, and everybody is on the acquisition of Islamic knowledge now. Then a generation and a generation or two, then we have something to look at. We say, look what this tree has harvested. Look what this tree has borne. Look what has been given birth to. Based on the fact that we kept the covenant. We were, we kept the, 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 the pact. And that is to be solely committed to Allah, to better ta'ala, and ascribe nothing to Him. Ibn, uh, Ibn Uthaymeen, Allah, received his education from many prominent scholars. Like Sheikh Abdul Rahman al-Sa'adi. This is one of his main scholars he studied with. Sheikh Muhammad Amin al Shanqiti, and of course Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz. Sheikh Sa'adi, the Rahman al Sa'adi, Sheikh Shanqiti, the old Shanqiti, not the present 